In the third part of the tutorial, we will continue developing our library management application. If you haven't watched part 1, then please watch it now. In the part 2 of the tutorial, we have designed the model of the application – business objects, relationships and business rules. Now we are ready to proceed to the next step. According to the development methodology, described in part 1 of the tutorial, we need to define user goals and scenarios, or use cases, describing how users will interact with our system. First of all, let's define categories of our users. We will, we will have the following categories. Administrator. For now, administrators will only create and delete staff members, and the bulk of the work will be done by the staff members. Staff members. These users will do most of the work. Register new members, items and loans. Members. These will be registered members who have access to our system. They won't be able to do much other than change their own details, search the library and check the details of their loans without being able to change them. So let's define goals for administrators. They are quite straightforward. Create a staff member, change staff member details, delete staff member. Goals of staff member users are Create new item, change item details, delete an item, create new member, change member details, delete a member, register a loan for the member, close the loan and mark item as returned. And goals of the member users? Search the library for a particular item and check if the item is available. Change personal details. See the current and past loans. We now need to define core goals of the application. But for such a small application, we will consider all goals to be core goals. So let's describe the first use case for the administrator goal of creating a staff member. We assume that the administrator is already logged in. The user selects the Create Staff Member operation from the system menu. The system displays a form of the staff member, including name, address and other details. The user fills out the details of the staff member and hits Save. The system saves the new staff member and displays a blank form for the, ne for the next staff member to create. We recommend that you define all core use cases before implementing them, but to make our tutorial more interesting, I will be implementing them straight away. So let's implement the Create Staff Member use case. First of all, we need to define our user categories. Essentially, these are a where I am access levels. For more details about access levels, please watch the access levels tutorial. Two access levels, administrator and guest, are always provided by default. So we need to define the other two, for members and staff members. We'll call them member and staff member. For now, we'll just define them without specifying their details. We will also need a visual perspective for each access level. So we will define a perspective for the staff member and member. For more details about visual perspectives, please watch the visual perspectives tutorial.
Again, at this stage, we will just define the perspectives without specifying their properties. Because members and staff members will need to log into the system, we must add the member and staff member business objects to the system user business object group. This will automatically add a number of required attributes to these objects, including the access level attribute. We will make sure that this attribute is initialized to member for the member object and staff member for the staff member object. Member and staff member are the names of access levels, which just happen to be the same as the names of the corresponding objects. Now we are ready to implement the create staff member use case. In this case, it is, it is as simple as defining a menu item to our administrator visual perspective that will create the staff member object. So we open the administrator visual perspective, go to the system menu, and add a menu item. We are now ready to test this use case. So I'll put the version under test. And start the browser. So when we log in, we can invoke the create staff member operation from the menu. And the system displays the default form of the object. The form looks very untidy and displays unnecessary fields. We do not want to display an access level because it is always the staff member. We also do not want to display time zone, theme, locale, RTL, as we will use the default values for them. As recommended in the methodology, at this point it is not normally necessary to worry about the user interface to be polished and perfect, but I will adjust the forms as we go to make it at least look tidy. It is perfectly fine to do this. So let's go back to our object and polish the form a little bit. Please watch the forms tutorial for more details on how to edit forms. First, I will remove unnecessary attributes. Then I will make the form a little bit smaller. Then I will anchor the column to the right edge and increase the label width of the column. And now we'll make the address attribute a little bit bigger. Well, this is good. So when we go back to the browser, we can see that the form looks much better now. And we can create a staff member.
When we hit the Create button, the staff member is created and the form blanks out, ready for us to create another one. The next use case for the administrator is to update a staff member's details. To do this, the administrator first needs to find the staff member. The use case may look like this. The user selects Find Staff Member operation from the main menu. The system displays a form where the user can enter parameters of the search, such as name and or address of the staff member. The user enters search parameters and hits OK. The system displays the staff members matching the entered parameters. If the user entered nothing, all staff members are displayed. The user clicks on the entry of the staff member he wants to update. The system displays the form of the staff member. The user changes the details of the staff member and hits Save. The system updates the details of the staff member. Let's implement this use case. For the system to enter search parameters, search the data and display the results, we need to define a query. For more details about queries, please watch the queries tutorial. We will define a query that will use the form of the staff member object. So here we select the form to be displayed. A where I am will automatically use the entered parameters to display staff members matching the entered data. We will also select the attributes of the staff member object that we want to display. And we will also define the edit operation for our query that will, that will allow the user to click on the entry and display a form of the selected entry. Now we just need to define a menu item that will run our query. We can now test this use case. So we'll log in using the browser again, and we can see the new menu item to search for staff members. We select this menu item, and the system displays a pop-up window with parameters of the search. We can enter certain parameters to find the staff member we want. If we don't, all staff members are displayed. We only have one, so I'll just hit search. We can see that the staff member is displayed and we can click on the edit button to navigate to the form of the staff member. And now we can make some changes and press save. The changes are saved by the system. The last use case for the administrator is to delete a staff member. Again, the user needs to first identify the staff member to delete. So the first four steps of this use case are the same as the previous one. The only difference is that now the user can click on the delete icon next to a particular entry. Or select several entries and click the delete button to delete, to delete them all at once. To implement this use case, we just add the delete operation to our previous query. We will also define a panel operation 
to delete several records at once. Let's see how this works. So when we log into our application and click on the Find Staff Member button again, we can see now that there is a Delete button next to the Staff Member entry. And if we press this button, the system will ask us whether we want to delete it. If we say yes, the system will delete it. This concludes the administrator use cases. In the next tutorial, we will discuss the use cases of the staff member user.